Spike and I met in the summer of 1981 in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, I went down uh, after ha having made this film called The War at Home. And um, I was researching other projects for myself, and uh, that took me down south, where I'm from. And uh, we met, he was working with a friend of his uh, over the summer at, um, at Spelman College. And coming back that, that fall, we both came back to New York. I had a company at the time called First Run Features. Uh, it's a film distribution company that a bunch of us independent filmmakers set up. And uh, we were looking around for a somebody to work part time just to clean prints and, and get them together to ship out. And Spike was really, it was like a perfect job for, um, for a um, film student. And he's the only film student I knew. And uh, I hired him. So, so, yeah, I was president of the company. I made $200 a week. He was part time, he made $100 a week. So that was the kind of company he was. But um, over the next few years, we really got to know each other. And um, I would say at the time, in the early 80s, in New York, uh, the group I was in, he was one of the few people who I knew who really, who just loved movies. You know, he had a, he had a love for, for cinema and, the, and, and, and a respect for, a respect for, I would say, entertainment uh, that a lot of people I knew didn't have. A lot of people I knew at the time had really gone in to, to make films, make documentaries and other things, um, more as political statements rather than just a love of cinema. And Spike really had that love of cinema. So the two of us really um, gravitated towards each other. And we, you know, I, I, I made a few other little documentaries at the time, and he worked on his student films, and we helped each other out. And when he made She's Gotta Have It, uh, I really wasn't around for the production She's Gotta Have It. But he asked me, uh, once, it, once it was done, to come in and, and do some work with him in post-production. And, uh, and, and so I did. I helped him out there. And when he did School Days, um, he, he asked me to edit it for him. And I mean, I really wasn't an editor. Um, I worked with one other friend of mine. I worked with one other friend of mine, Mira Nair, who did Salam Bombay. And, um, you know, um, that was it. Uh, I'd, I'd done one thing with her. And uh, so he asked me to do school days. And I said, yeah, sure, I'll do it, you know. I mean, I thought it was uh, an unusual novel idea that somebody would actually consider me an editor. I edited my own stuff, but basically that was it. You know, Do the Right Thing, to me, is this magical film because of how well the script is structured and how well each piece just falls together. Um, very, very, very few films are that tightly composed. Um, and what was nice about it, as an editor, was I didn't realize how beautifully composed the script was when I read the script until editing the film. And, and you know, you're working on such detail. And as you edit, you realize just how much Spike, how much, how many moments Spike has put in the very beginning that now unfold into something else at the end, all within a one day story. And and, and, and you're getting this sense throughout the film that this is sort of meandering on some level. Um, and yet, he's, he hasn't meandered at all. There's no moment that's, that's extra or wasted. And it, it, all, it all informs you. Uh, uh, it all informs you to... to What's the word I'm looking at? What's the sentence I'm looking for? Um, all of these moments bring you to that climactic moment. Without any one of those moments, you're going to have a little bit less than the, than the film can offer. And I didn't realize that until editing the film. And, and I remember at the time, and maybe that was part of my excitement, one of my parts of my excitement of, of, of cutting this film, because to me it was the most exciting film to cut. A lot of times people say, oh, that must be fun, or that must be fun, in terms of some editing job. And most of the time I say, well, no, it's not fun, it's, it's work. But you know, Do the Right Thing was actually fun. 
it was actually fun to work on it, and, and it was exciting because it was some sense of working on something that was beautiful. There was one thing that I did on Do the Right Thing that I thought was actually pretty nice. Um, they had a rain day in which they didn't have a cover set. So they had uh, Sam Jackson just do this roll call thing. He said, you know, they said, well, we have, you know, Spike said, well, we have the, the, the radio station. Let's, let's do this. So, um, and, 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 and also throughout the, the, the film, whenever they had sort of lulls, a few little lulls, or, or actually Spike had this idea in his mind uh, that he just wanted shots of people being hot. He didn't know how he was going to use it or if he's ever going to use it. And so, every, you know, in dailies, we would, every once in a while, there'd be a shot of somebody, and they were just sitting there, hot, or uh, doing something hot. They're just, and you know, it's hot. And some big camera movement, you know, across everything, and it was just hot. And, um, but Spike said, well, I don't know, you know, we'd sit together in dailies, and he'd say, well, I don't, you know, I don't know, it looks good, but I don't know, I, I don't know if we'll ever use this. And um, so one day, after having cut the entire film, and I, I thought, you know, I think, I think that this, we can marry these two. We got this roll call and all this, all this, all this heat, and I asked Spike, you know, mind if I do this? And go ahead, you know, I don't know if it's gonna work, but go ahead. I cut this together, and it just, and it was, this is nice moment that I mean, in many respects, the film kind of the film kind of stops for this moment and it starts up again, you know. But uh, you know, with the music and all, it doesn't it doesn't feel like we're really taking a a, a, a side road here. It actually, I, I guess, helps the whole sense of this just being a very 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 hot day. You asked me before whether or not I was ever on the set, and basically, I never was. But there was one time. I went on the set, um, to sh and uh, actually, in, in all the times that Spike and I worked together, this was the only time I ever showed up and said, Spike, we, we got a problem. And it was on Do the Right Thing, it was the, it was the scene where the kid runs out in front of the, the car. Uh, it was shot on a Thursday. And on Friday, I knew that, that they, they had a lot of the actors there and they were going to lose many of the actors that were in that scene. Some of them were taking off, going other places. Um, and we shot a film, so you didn't have a tape to like show Spike like what, what I thought the problem was. What, the, what I thought the problem was when I saw it on the steam bag uh, that morning was that it looked to me, it didn't, I was not convinced that this kid was really about to get hit by the, by the car from the shot that was supposed to sell you on that idea, right? So I show, up on the, I show up, I go out there uh, right before lunch. And I say, Spike, you know, I, think, I think this is a problem. I, you know, I just don't believe it. When I look at this footage, I think we can cut, cut this scene together. And you know, the mayor's supposed to come out and save this kid, but I, you know, the, the, the danger isn't there. Spike looked at me and said, well, I, you know, I didn't see it, so I don't really understand what the problem is. Uh, and and he, said, he said, so what, what do you suggest? What do you suggest we do? And so I was starting to suggest something, and Spike just said, listen, all right, all right, maybe you're right. Set up the camera where you think it should go. And I never, I never had anything to do with, with directing, like uh, that kind of directing or anything like that. And it intimidated, it always intimidated me, you know, these sets because they were so big and so many people. And, uh, but, and everybody's like looking. I mean, nobody's seen this before. Like somebody, somebody like out there like doing, doing this, talking to Spike this way. And so Ernest and I set up this camera way up the block and, and did this shot uh, of the, you know, to compress the distance between the car coming around the corner and that kid, that kid running out. Um, and, uh, you know, and it worked actually. I think it works pretty well. You remember that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>